Dear friends of human spaceflight, we were told many times that the new space era, the new space race has begun. Let's have a look at different upcoming space systems. What new rockets can we witness launching? Which fascinating new space telescopes will show us the secrets of the universe? What robotic probes will explore our solar system? And most importantly, when are we going to visit other planetary bodies? And at last, let us take a glance into the further future when the borders of the solar system won't limit us anymore. Now we have a lot to talk about to build this vision of our future in space, so stay tuned. So let us have an overlook of all rocket systems in development worldwide. Let us start on Earth and go through companies with suborbital flight capabilities. Virgin Galactic made the first step with its Spaceship 2 rocket plane ahead of Blue Origin. They are going to fly with paying passengers this year. Blue Origin was left behind with the first crewed flight on their new Shepard, but already flew that small rocket with passengers and will continue doing so. As we know, this is the highest altitude they reached yet. Another approach is to fly to the edge of space on a balloon. This is the plan of a company called Worldview from Denmark. The small Copenhagen suborbital company is planning to send a brave astronaut to the edge of space in a tiny rocket on a breathtaking flight. Stratolaunch also have plans with their gigantic carrier airplane to send Talon hypersonic vehicles for test flights. Let's move on to higher regions and velocities, so to orbit. Without a doubt, the Starship system of SpaceX is the strongest candidate of all future rockets. A fully reusable two-stage system, close to its first orbital flight, perhaps already in March. Right after a successful flight, they will start delivering the new version of the Starlink satellites to orbit with the Starship system this year if all goes well. Besides the Starship, we will see their Falcon 9 and their awesome Falcon Heavy flying several times. One launch each week, this is very ambitious. The United Launch Alliance also has an interesting rocket, the Vulcan, although it won't be fully reusable. Unfortunately, Tori Bruno decided to use the BE-4 engine by Blue Origin, which Jeff Bezos' company could not deliver yet. Anyway, hopefully we will see the Vulcan flying soon. The BE-4 engines will also be used on the new Glenn. Blue Origins partially or fully, it always changes, reusable heavy lift rocket is developing very slowly. Bezos will need it if he wants to build his space vision, starting with the Orbital Reef space station. Talking about rockets taking too long to be completed, we must mention the SLS of course, NASA's last own rocket. SLS will fly this year and will hopefully get us to the moon even if the price tag per launch will be insanely high. In the United States we will see Relativity Space building or more precisely 3D printing their fully reusable Terran R rocket. Arrival for the Starship at last. Small new companies are also working hard to reach orbit soon. Astra, Firefly and the unconventional method Spin Launch is also aiming to send payloads to low earth orbit. Here at To The Future we love to promote science and space flight, but we like to do it in a fun and sharp way so there's a little dose of sarcasm from time to time going beyond the usual channels with misrepresented information and clickbait headlines. If you like this way of promoting science and would like to be part of the To The Future community, you can help us grow by sharing, liking and of course subscribing to our channel. We also welcome your opinions about the content of our videos and recommendations to the channel in the comment section. So thank you very much in advance for your support. Jumping to the east, arriving in Europe, we will see the Ariane company building their next rocket, the Ariane 6, hopefully flying this year. It is still not reusable, but the successor, Ariane Next, will at last be capable to reuse the first stage like the Falcon 9. That is planned for some time in the 2030s. Well, a bit late to the game, we'd say, but better late than never. 
Maybe new startup companies will act faster. Skyrora, Orbex, Rocket Factory Augsburg, Isar Aerospace, just to name some of those. Okay, let's see the famous old actor of space exploration, Russia. Their new rocket, the Angara 5, has already flown, but it is still not perfect and not reusable, but at least the planned Amur rocket will be able to land with its first stage. We can categorize it as Falcon 9 grade of reusability. Amur is planned to fly in 2026. Arriving in the Far East, Korea is on track with their space program and their Nuri rocket. The Japanese space agency JAXA has plans for a partially reusable rocket and is making steps towards it with RVX and then with Callisto in 2024. And last but not least, China of course has some reusable vehicles in development. First and foremost this vehicle that just by accident looks like Starship by CALT, the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology. We are sure this is just a coincidence that it looks like a 100% copy of Starship. I have never heard that China copied something, seriously. Name me only one instance, one single instance, when China ever copied something. Apart from that, we have some smaller Chinese space startups like Link Space and iSpace that are working on small reusable rockets, but nothing spectacular yet. And of course, the Chinese National Space Agency is famously working on their new moon rocket, basically an upgrade of their existing Long March 5 rocket. In the further future, China will also build the Long March 9, but that one is probably still 8 to 9 years away. Moving to the Southern Hemisphere, the New Zealand based Rocket Lab has big plans. The flight proven electron rocket is planned to turn into a partially reusable one. The first stage of electron is planned to be caught mid air by a helicopter already this year. Besides that, Rocket Lab has bigger plans a bigger rocket, the Neutron. It will be partially reusable and is planned to fly already earliest in 2024. Also in New Zealand, Dawn Aerospace is working on their Aurora space plane. Other space planes are also planned. In China, the Space Transportations Vehicle and the CASC Tengyun are currently being developed. The Radiant space plane from the US will be a competitor to these. So what are new vehicles in orbit? First, the spaceship of the Artemis project, Orion, a great new spaceship capable of reaching moon orbit, and even further. The Russians are developing their new Orel spaceship, which is something similar. SpaceX Starship is another mm, slightly bigger new spaceship too. Then we know that Neutron will be human rated, but we don't know yet what the spaceship will be for that launch vehicle. But we know a lot about Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser, a little but potent space shuttle. The cargo version will fly first. The ULA Vulcan is planned to carry the Dream Chaser to space in the first half of 2022. Later the small space plane will be human rated and could act as a space taxi to and from the different space stations. One of the orbital outposts is the good old International Space Station. Current plans are to retire it in 2031, where its remains will drop into the Pacific Ocean. Then Axiom Space is developing their commercial space station. First it will be attached to the ISS and when it grows big and independent enough, it will undock and start an independent orbital life. Besides the ISS, the Chinese Tiangong-2 is the only working space station right now and the building of this Chinese station is not yet finished. More modules will be docked to it. A space telescope will also accompany the Tiangong-2 flying information with the station, allowing the Taikonauts to visit it from their orbital habitat in order to service and improve upon it. A unique solution that we have never seen before. Private space industry will be stronger and send new commercial space stations to low Earth orbit. Orbital Reef is one of these new stations. With the cooperation of Sierra Nevada Space and Blue Origin, the new station will host inflatable modules and conventional ones. The Dream Chaser could be a service vehicle for the Orbital Reef, but even the SpaceX Dragon will be able to dock according to the plans. Another new commercial space station is the Starlab by Nanorex and Lockheed Martin. 
somewhat smaller than the orbital reef, Starlab will be built using a big inflatable module for four astronauts. One ring to rule them all could be the motto for the Orbital Assembly Corporation. They plan to send the gravity ring to low Earth orbit. The exact dates are not known yet, but it will be a testbed for creating artificial gravity by means of rotation and for their innovative P-Star robotic structure builder spacecraft. After Gravity Ring, their plan is a Pioneer class space station and then the Space Odyssey style Voyager class space station. Now coming to space telescopes, we already have heard a lot about the James Webb Space Telescope. Fortunately, it is on track to give us great science and the first pictures and data will arrive later this year. With better capability, JWST will discover new exoplanets, perhaps signs of life there, and will be able to see deeper into the distance and into the past. NASA also has plans to launch the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope in the mid-2020s. It will investigate the secrets of dark matter, find even more exoplanets with its wider angle of view in the infrared spectrum. Another important project is the NEO Surveyor Space Telescope. NEO Surveyor will watch the sky with its infrared eyes and spot every asteroid that is dangerous for the Earth. NASA plans to launch it in 2026. And then, if we take an even bigger step, the next big space telescope of the future will be the Louvoir, the large ultraviolet optical infrared surveyor. Louvoir will be even bigger and more capable than the JWST. The planned launch date is in 2039. This telescope is so big that NASA is planning to use either the Space Launch System or the SpaceX Starship in order to send it to space. With Louvoir, we will be able to characterize the wide range of exoplanets and find habitable planets. Now take a deep breath, because we will jump into the more distant future. With the help of the enormous mass of our Sun, it is possible to see even further into the universe. The Sun's gravity lens effect can be used as a highly potent space telescope, because our star is so heavy that it bends the path of light around it. This is an effect that has been predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. To use this effect, the telescope must be placed very far away from the Sun, a minimum of 550 times the distance of the Earth to the Sun, which is called an astronomical unit. To put this into perspective, Pluto is at a distance of 39 astronomical units from the Sun. The Voyager probes got to about 150 astronomical units and they are flying away from us with 3 to 4 AUs per year. So a new propulsion method will be needed in order to send instruments so far away. Solar sails might be a viable solution here. Either using one or more smaller probes, the plan is to move in a spiral close to the sun, then open the solar sails and then accelerate to immense speeds away from the sun. We are talking about 20 to 30 AUs per year, so this project will last at least 20 to 30 years. But with this method, we will be able to create direct, detailed images of an exoplanet around another star. We will be able to see continents or seas if they exist and maybe even vegetation. This will be absolutely game-changing technology for us in order to definitely prove the existence of life on faraway extrasolar planets. So friends of human spaceflight, in this video we covered the launch vehicles, spaceships, new space stations and space telescopes of our near and distant future. We haven't talked about the mega constellations, the planned Moon, Venus and Mars missions, activities, asteroid mining and other fascinating planned deep space missions yet, because we keep that for the next episode. Thanks for watching from our team here at To The Future. All the best from us and then on to the future.